okay, I've got something for you. The new parts have been fitted to the car. The simulation numbers are good, so I look forward to your feedback. Check out the details. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Nock. Welcome along to the Belgium Grand Prix at Spa and we kick off with another engine upgrade which we have been working on the durability. Now, practice was not a good experience for me as you'll see here. Um, this is my very, very first lap in P1 um, going out on the track acclimatization test and um, as we head down to Eau Rouge here, um, things got a little bit um, hairy and uh, we just literally lost the car the the setup was not very good at all and we take off the front left so that was the end of p1 uh p2 we went straight back out again on the track acclimatization test we did manage to get a lap in um, but we didn't pass the test so this is um lap number two i think i was a little bit more tentative on the first lap going through Eau rouge but um as we come up to Eau rouge on the second lap we um yeah get it massively wrong again and um, I really didn't know what was causing it. I was trying to correct it. I just could not correct it at all. And when I checked out the setup, I think I was running my car too low to the ground. And I think what was happening was the, the car was actually hitting the floor midway through Eau Rouge. And it was un making it un very unstable. And it just threw it out, as you can see on the replay. We just, yeah, that was the end of that. But um, so that was the first two practice sessions. P3 was a little bit better as you can see we do the track acclimatization on the second lap we go across the line and get a green score uh, but we did actually rerun the track acclimatization we carried on and um, as you'll see here we come in across the line on the second lap and we get a purple so not too bad after that dreadful dreadful start um, we did manage to get a purple in something at least and then we did try the um, uh, I don't know what that one was that was the qualifying pace. That's qualifying pace. And we get a um, estimated eighth place with a 151. As for qualifying, it was a wet session in the quali and um, our look just carried on basically. Yeah, we just got it massively too much power in sector three coming up to the bus stop chicane and um, into the wall and we lost our front left. So. Um, yeah, and that was with no time set on the board, unfortunately. So it looks like we are going to be starting from the back of the grid for the Belgian Grand Prix. With that then, let's run through the grid order. Sebastian Vettel will start on pole. Fantastic qualifying from the multiple world champion. Edging out Raikkonen, he'll start P2. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Hamilton, Bottas, Max Verstappen, and Massa, Ricardo, Grosjean, Perez, and Lance Stroll, Fiat, Ocon, Fernando Alonso, and Palmer, Holkenberg, Van Dorn, Pascal Wehrlein, and Marcus Ericsson, Sainz, and a Haas rounds off the grid. And with preparations almost complete, Let's head down to the track. Okay, don't worry about making places into one. It's far too tight. Concentrate on a clean exit so you get good momentum down the camel straight. So, um, I decided off the start, I think we need to do something different with this race because um, I haven't had the best of luck so far and starting right at the back of the grid... Um, yeah, we need to pull something out of the bag. So what I decided to do was I decided to swap the stint round and start on the uh, super soft tyres and finish off on the ultra soft in the hope that um, by the time we get on the ultra softs, the fuel have burned off and we'll be able to get some um, good lap times in and, uh, you know, maybe make up some places. So, um, yeah, I also shortened the stint on the super soft to six laps instead of second seven. Um, so that we've got a little bit longer on the ultra soft tyres um, to give us hopefully that bit of an advantage but if we head over to the grid it's almost race time so uh, it's five lights and off we go and it was a pretty cautious start I'll be honest it was very very cautious from myself I didn't want to get tangled up in any first corner incidents and I thought dive bombing down the inside it's a tight entry into the first corner here so um, yeah I just wanted to Bide my time, follow the pack as we um, head down to Eau Rouge here, all over the back of Pascal Verline. But I kind of hold off a little bit because I don't want to get too close to Eau Rouge because, you know, that would probably spell disaster and we'd probably be squabbling and, and end up crashing. But um, as we head onto the kennel straight here, we are actually going to make up some ground on Verline. And um, at the end, I think we're going to dive down the 
inside and take a place, but we're actually going to take more than one place. We're going to try and get in front of uh, Van Dorn, but um, he closes the door on us, and uh, it's just Verline and Signs for now on lap one. So um, two places we've made up quite nicely already as we um, continue on into the uh, middle sector of the track. Trying to keep everything nice and tidy and stick with uh, Van Dorn as we move it down to standard fuel mode right now, so we don't need to push around this because it's um, quite a twisty turny section of the track so um, I found that the second sector was the strongest um, sector for me throughout this race so yeah that was quite interesting really as I found but uh, yeah let's head on back on board here as we're coming to the last couple of corners of the middle section and then we head on to the fast last section and yeah we kind of had a bit of a step out moment there let's try and get a nice exit through here into the third sector I think it's not pretty tidy pretty tidy Lost a bit of ground to Van Dorn, but I think we'll um, start to pick it up again here. As you can see, we're in the slipstream, and we are gaining, gaining, gaining. And I think we're going to make a move here into the bus stop chicane as we head to the inside, side by side, into the bus shop stop chicane. Last of the late breakers. And, um, yeah, he kind of tried to go defensive, but I've got the inside line for the last second part of the uh, chicane here, and we take 18th place going on to lap two. Moving to the end of lap two, and we're right on the back of Ericsson here as we head down towards the bus stop chicane again. So we're going to hopefully try and pull another move as we did on his teammate on the uh, first lap as we come flying around that corner and um, dive down the inside again. And little locks up, we've got a little bit of wheel touch in there, but um, we do actually go out wide, so we're still not out of the clear as we kind of like try and squeeze him a little bit. And Ericsson actually tucks in behind us, so um, yeah, we are now up to P16 and um, moving on a little bit more, ready for our next victim on lap four. And we've been holding steady for now, but um, people in front of us are starting to pit. We are catching up to Alonso in front of us, but. Um, yeah, we're going to gain some places here as people take their pit stops. And uh, this is going to push us up so far. P12, P11, ahead of our teammate. As we go around the first corner, we're going to pick up any more? I don't think so. So uh, up to P11 at the beginning of lap five. But sticking with Alonso here as we head up to on Road Rouge, but we had to sort of back out a little bit. It was far too close to him, and I wasn't confident that um, I was going to have um, a, uh, a good battle with him and be able to follow him up on Rouge. But we're trying to close him down, see if we can get him down at the end of the kennel straight, but I think he's just ultimately too far in front, and we're just going to hold position for, um, for the time being at least. The end of the lap, though, we are uh, again once on the back. This seems to be a good overtaking spot for him, so, for us today. So, um, yeah, we head almost to the outside, give him the dummy, and then switch back to the inside. But on the brakes, we're just absolutely mighty as cars in front of us also pit. So, um, yeah, I'm quite impressed with that move. We get the DRS to pull away a little bit further, but um, with the cars in the pits as well, we are well and truly up into the points. The strategy at the moment is is playing well for us. It's playing well as we. Um, into a P7 here, and uh, next on the list is Lance Stroll. Um, lap six, though, and we are going to head into the pits and um, put on our ultra soft tyres, which um, hopefully means we're going to have a good, solid second half to the race and um, be able to um, score some solid points. You know, the pace on the super soft tyres so far has been um, they're showing pretty well, so um, yeah, hopefully, we can carry on that pace going forwards. 2.6 seconds start, which isn't isn't the best, but uh, not the slowest by any means. And um, as we head down out of the pits here, it's going to be a race against the cars who are um, right behind us. You see we've got a right train of cars, so we just managed to get out in front of them, which was um, really, really nice. As we go on board here with Hulkenberg, he's going to have DRS here as um, we head up Eau Rouge onto the Kennel Straight. So... Um, yeah, we're going to be coming under a lot of pressure as we head to the end of here as we look back from my car. So we head to the inside to um, go defensive and um, hopefully try and outbreak. But Hulkenberg was good on the brakes. He, he tried to hang it out on the inside of this corner, but we held on the outside and managed to cut back across and retain the place. So, um, yeah, P15 for now. Um, that was a good little battle. I enjoyed that. Just got out in the nick of time and ahead of the traffic. So hopefully on these ultra stars we can start to put the hammer down and make some progress. The end of lap seven 
a couple more cars in the pits and that promotes us to a nice P13 right behind Danny Ricardo. So um, yeah, uh, clawing our way back towards the points quite nicely now. And um, lap eight, I think Massa, yeah, Massa retired. Massa pulled to the side of the track as we go turning massively too early there. Uh, yeah, he re pulled off to the to the right of the track here and he was out the race, so um, that now gives us P12. And as you can see, we are chasing down Ricardo. We're right on the back of him here, end of lap eight, as um, Van Dorm dives into the pits and gets out of the squabble. So up to P11, but there's a couple more cars pitting in front of us. So from the back of the grid, we are now in a point scoring position as we come round the first corner, ever closest to Daniel Ricciardo here on lap nine, and they get the power down, and that is P9. So um, yeah, in the points, and things are looking really good, but we're right on the back of Ricardo here as we head up Eau Rouge, and um, can we actually pull a move off Ricardo? We get a little bit of um, nervousness twitch there at the top of Eau Rouge, but can we make enough ground on him on the kennel straight and make a dive down the inside into the corner? Has a look. But um, no, ultimately it was too far back. Uh, I wasn't good enough on the brakes. It was right at the back of Ricardo's um, back end there. So um, yeah, very luckily uh, didn't manage to get any damage. Uh, kept it nice and clean. But on to the next lap, lap 10. Ricardo seems to have made a little bit of a gap. I've got Lance Stroll following us. He's keeping pace of us right behind us here. So um, yeah, we have to be careful not to try and make any mistakes. But as we head down Eau Rouge once more on the back of Danny Rick, um, we'll look at it from uh, his perspective, flying the Pone Rouge, and uh, we're going to try and gain the place here. The same as door. Hopefully, we can be a bit later on the brakes than we were on the last time. We're about the same distance as um, he puts on the brakes, and yeah, we brake much later here and get a nice line through the corner, and that promotes us up to a nice uh, P8, I think it was. Yes, P8. So, um, yeah, we've uh, just about a lap and a half to go in the Belgian Grand Prix. Seconds. So this is the final lap guys as we come and bring it over the line it was um, pretty good actually uh, Stroll actually got ahead of Danny Ricciardo so definitely using the ultra soft tyres on this latter part of the race was definitely a very very good move strategically we've gained a lot of places we've got ourselves four more championship points so all in all not a bad race here in Belgium around Spa. Thank you for all your hard work out there. That was a strong drive and a good finish. Well done. So Sebastian Vettel takes the win with Lewis Hamilton second, Kimi Raikkonen in third. Our teammate Roman Grosjean finishes sixth, which means it's a double point scoring finish for Haas and um, strengthens our position in the constructors. Looking at the championship standings, it's Daniel Ricciardo who's had the bad day there with his low point scoring finish. He now loses a place to Sebastian Vettel who moves up to fourth. Our teammate Roman Grosjean with his point scoring finish moves up to 11th place. It's as you were in the constructors though, so um, we've just strengthened our position here against Force India. We now are 17 points ahead and... Um, Really at the forefront of the midfield battle, which I'm really, really pleased about. Guys, thank you very much for watching. As always, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think to the race. Did I do the right call? Could I have done anything better? And um, we'll be back real soon with the Italian Grand Prix around Monza. What a powerhouse circuit that is. But until next time, I've been Knock. You've been awesome. Happy gaming.